Welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be finding the area of a rose curve. Specifically, we're going to find the area um, of the petals of the rose curve of r equals 4 sine 3 theta. We're going to do this by finding the area of one petal and then multiplying it by 3. We're going to concentrate on the petal here in quadrant 1. And in order to do that, we need to figure out what the endpoints of integration are for that particular petal. To find the endpoints of integration, we can compare our graph to that of the rectangular form of the graph. So we have f of x equals 4 sine 3x. Where this rectangular graph has x-intercepts or zeros, the polar graph is going to have points at the pole. So we need to find the zeros of this graph. We can do that by setting the equation equal to 0 and solving for x. So where 4 sine 3x is equal to 0 is where the sine of 3x is 0 or where 3x is equal to 0, pi, 2 pi, or 3 pi, or so on. Then solving for x, we get 0, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, and pi. Looking at our graph, you can see that we have zeros at 0, pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, and pi, and of course it would continue on. In the same way, we can find the petal tips of the polar graph by looking for the relative extrema of the rectangular form of the graph. Where the rectangular form of the graph has relative maximum or minimum points, the polar graph will have petal tips. We can find these relative extrema by finding our first derivative and setting it equal to zero. So using the function f of x equals 4 sine 3x, we can take our first derivative and that gives us 12 cosine of 3x. Then in order to find the maximum or minimum points, we're going to set it equal to zero to find where our tangent lines are horizontal or where they have slopes of 0. So we're going to set 0 equal to 12 cosine 3x and solve for x. So that's going to be where the um, cosine of 3x is equal to 0, or where 3x equals pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and so on. Then solving for x, we get pi over 6, pi over 2, and 5 pi over 6 as three of our maximum or minimum points. So looking at our rectangular equation at pi over 6, you can see that we have a point here that is a maximum at 4. Now that is a positive output value. But when we go over here to pi over 2, we have a negative 4, a minimum point here. Now these are still going to give us petal tips, but you have to think about where you're going to plot those petal tips on your polar form. And we'll do that in a minute. Then at 5 pi over 6, we're back to positive 4. So we have another relative maximum point. Okay, so here is the same graph on our polar grid. So our petal tips are at pi over 6, pi over 2, and 5 pi over 6. So when we plug pi over 4, I'm sorry, pi over 6 into our equation, we get out of 4. So that's going to give us this petal tip in quadrant 1. Then plugging in pi over 2, we got out a negative 4. So we're down here. Remember, your pi over 2 line is here, but we're going to be on the other side of the pole when we have a negative value for our radius length. Then at 5 pi over 6, we have an output of positive 4, so we're here in quadrant 2. Now, in between the petal tips, we have zeros. So if we look here, if we start at 0, and we loop around to pi over 6, and then we come back to our next critical point at pi over 3, we would have done this entire loop for the first petal tip. And that would continue on. So the petal in quadrant 1 is going to be bounded by 0 and pi over 3. Let's look at this in more detail. Okay, so what we're going to do here is trace out this rose curve by moving our, changing our angle measure. So right now you can see our angle is at 0, and I put some um, equivalents for radian measures here so you can follow along. So what we're going to do is trace it out so you can see now it's moving its um, angle measures at point 1. And we're heading into point 5, which is about pi over 6. And then it's going to loop around that first pedal tip. And now it's going to head down the other side of the pedal. So we're coming into pi over 3, which is about 1.04. So you can see it's pretty close to that right now. Now what I want you to notice after we move past pi over 3 is that it goes down, 
to the petal tip that's going to be having a petal tip at negative 4 and pi over 2. So it's not going over to the 5 pi over 6 petal tip. So here we are. And then we're going to head into our next 0, which should be at 2.09 or 2 pi over 3. So you can see that we hit that. And then we're going to head to the next one, which is at 5 pi over 6 is our next petal tip. And it's going to loop around and come in toward pi, which is our next 0. So you kind of have to be careful when you're doing these endpoints of integration. A lot of people think, okay, well, it goes around 2 pi, so I'll just integrate from 0 to 2 pi to get the entire area. But this graph actually only goes till pi to complete the whole cycle. If you went to 2 pi, <coughs> you would um, repeat the entire graph again, so you'd have too much area. So what you need to do is look to see um, when it completes the entire cycle. Now, I'm just integrating the first petal when I'm doing this and then multiplying it by 3, um, mostly because I wanted you to see what would happen if you were just trying to find the area of one petal. But you could integrate from 0 to pi on this one. Just be careful and don't automatically assume everything goes from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so we're just going to integrate the area of the first petal and multiply it by 3. All the petals are going to have exactly the same area, so we can do it that way. So we're going to multiply our formula by 3. Remember our formula for finding the area in polar form is 1 half the radius length squared d theta, um, the integral of the radius squared. So our radius is determined by our function, which in this case is 4 sine 3 theta, and then we're going to square that. So squaring um, the f of theta, we get 16 sine squared of 3 theta, and then I just multiply the 3 times a half. Then I brought the 16 out in, bit in front of the integral, so I have 24 times sine squared of 3 theta. And then using my power reducing formula, I'm going to rewrite the sine squared as 1 minus the cosine of twice the angle. So that's going to give me 6 theta for the angle, and then divide it by 2. Okay, so I'm going to bring the 2 out in front. So I have 12 times the integral of 1 minus cosine 6 theta, and I'm ready to integrate. So the integral of 1 is theta, and the integral of the cosine is the sine. And then we had to make an adjustment for the 6 times the angle, so it's negative 1, 6 sine 6 theta. And now we're ready to put in our endpoints of integration. So replacing theta with pi over 3, we have pi over 3 minus 1, 6 times the sine, of 6 times pi over 3, and replacing theta with 0, we get 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. Then um, we have the sine of 6 times pi over 3, which reduces to the sine of pi, 2 pi, and the sine of 2 pi is 0, so all we're left with is 12 times pi over 3, which is 4 pi for our area. Okay, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math.